All right, so for this case study, we're gonna be focusing on the diaphragm. And this example is a 64-year-old female with bronchitis, trouble breathing, and body pain. So on your first page, you're gonna have a summary of results. The executive summary looks the same for everybody. And the areas that we've highlighted on the summary of results are dynamic areas. That means it may look different on your report depending on your results. And as you can see, uh, you have things like the pillar in the first point, right? That's oxygenation, but there's four other pillar possibilities that could have been uh, chosen for, for this spot. Uh, and there's a lot of different organs and systems that are also going to be in the correlation spot on 1A and so on and so forth. Now, with that said, you'll also see that you you will see physical and emotional. It can be just physical or it can be both. Or just emotional. So this gives you kind of a quick snapshot of what's going on and where where the patterns might show up. Right. So as you can see, everything we talked about, the diaphragm affects the immune system. Right. The diaphragm affects, affects the circulatory system. Yeah. Right. So we talked, you know, this is, you can see the connection between the bronchitis and that, uh, and those symptoms that comes with that. Cause I'm sure, I mean, I know I've had bronchitis at least once in my life, um, maybe twice. And if I were to imagine from the point of view that I've learned about the body and health, this is a spitting image of what I would probably see on mine at that time. Right. If I had bronchitis, I mean, this is literally what I would want to see to really show me what I need to support immediately. Right. So that's what this is showing you is what are things that you need to support immediately. Now, some of you might also have on positions two or three pH environment twice. Right. So you'll have it on position four because that won't ever change. We always thought that that was very important to know what's going on with the pH system. And the other interesting thing here. Um, Again, this was just a unique uh, example and report mm -hmm. because oxygenation showed up here in the pH environment yep. as one of the most contributing factors to the pH. And spleen showed up under circulation, even though spleen is considered an immune organ. So again, you see these the layers of how all this stuff is tied together. And a lot of it is starting from the diaphragm. Yeah. So it's just interesting because this oxygenation and this oxygenation is the same. Yeah. Yeah. So then you also have a key for your report, and that's because we put percentages on there. For the purposes of this report, 50% or better is passing. So that means we want to first support anything below that 50%. You're also going to be noticing emotional and physical factors. That's because sometimes an organ needs to heal from an emotion, and sometimes it needs to heal from a physical something. And because of that, you know, we wanted to list out some of the, I guess, ingredients or factors onto the uh, emotional side of things to give you the opportunity to just check in with yourself, you know, what level is it on? Uh, so this allows you at least that opportunity to show you what we're measuring on different sides and for you to just check in with yourself with that. And then you also see acute versus chronic. The longer you've lived on planet Earth, the more likely you are to have more chronic stuff. Uh, acute is usually more recent. Chronic is usually more long-term or ongoing. So then you're going to have your pillars of health. And as we mentioned, uh, this the pillar that needs the most support is the oxygenation pillar, which is currently being impacted by the diaphragm. And lungs show up twice <laughs> for both the mouth and the emotions. So, uh, you know, so it really makes sense. And again, uh, this... As we see more and more data like this, we'll be able to uh, be able to see what's going on even before someone actually presents with uh, bronchitis, hopefully. Yeah. So now we know that diaphragm is a major precursor. <laughs> or it can be. Or it could be a major precursor to something potentially coming up in the lungs later on if it's not addressed. So on this page, you also get a resource, right? So if this was your report and um, oxygenation was the lowest pillar out of all of them, because this score is for that pillar, not for that organ that's being shown. The organ happens to be just the biggest thing that probably needs the most support that will affect the oxygenation uh, and vice versa. It's like a two-way street, right? So you can affect both the diaphragm and the entire pillar 
uh, just by doing these simple steps to improve. And actually one of them is deep, deep belly, belly breathing. breathing. <laughs> uh, crazy enough. Uh, so yeah, it's really, it's really huge. And because of the connections, obviously between the diaphragm and the lungs, mm -hmm. I would imagine just this would affect also the lungs and the score for the lungs for the mouth and the emotions would probably also improve. Yep. Right. So that's, it, it just starts to, uh, you know, we, we're here to just connect more dots for you on how to look at your report. Now, if this wasn't enough, right. Information. You could also go down to the sixth page and you can click on, because we've built a lot of resources for this report, for your education. On the sixth page, you have something that says, click here for full list of resources. When you do that, it takes you to an Excel spreadsheet with all of our resources to date. And we keep adding more every day. But the most important thing here is the glossary of terms for pillars of health with a VoiceWise report. So if you wanted to deep dive further into the lungs with the mouth and the lungs with the emotions, you would- And the diaphragm with the oxygenation. And the diaphragm, right? Connecting all the dots, then you could do that by using this document. This is a resource for you guys to use over and over again. So this is an online document that we're going to be updating- um, definitely frequently. So that's why we want this to be an online document like this. But this glossary uh, has all the pillars in it. As you can see, they're bolded. And then it has all the different organ possibilities below that. And then the page numbers are on the right-hand side. So in order to get to oxygenation and diaphragm, you left-click it and then left-click diaphragm, and it takes you to that and gives you a description and recommendation. Now, I want to point out, it says deep belly breathing again. When it says that, just know that was not... Um, that was not intentional. No, no, that was or, not an accident. Or, uh, sorry. It was yeah, very was, intentional. We put that there because to stress the importance of this simple thing. Yeah, sorry. It means that um, if it comes up twice like that, it means that it actually did come up in two different places for you. And so that is doubly important for that reason. Yeah, for, for you to really yeah. pay attention to that recommendation to really do it. Uh, and so it's not an accident. We didn't, you know, the, the resource that's on the report right there below the pillar, like we were just looking at. That's specifically generated for you based on your scores. Just based off the scores and the pillar. So it has nothing to do with the, the full glossary that we built out for you guys. So if it happens to come up on this page, your right pillar here. page, and it's also the glossary recommendation, that is definitely the first place to start. Yes. So, and then again, if that wasn't enough, right, you could go back up and go to mouth and then go to lungs. And this is if you also want to geek out, if you want to understand further what could be going on, right? So when you're dealing with the lungs, you're probably dealing with possibly infections in the mouth that it could have started from. And then over time, a year, then it starts to lead into problems. So then again, we recommend specific things, different oils, ways to remineralize, specific foods, food, specific teas. Yeah. So again, this is for preventative measure. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily once you have something like bronchitis, right? Okay. This will help, but then you probably need to do a little bit more if you were to also have bronchitis. All right. So then we list the two systems that need the most support out of the 10 systems that we measure. And we also include to the right of each system listed, the three things that are influencing that system and also a learning resource that you can click on for immediate information and action steps. Now, let's just say I was looking at this and I wasn't even seeing the next top priority. Just based off of this, the immune system, the mouth comes up, right? That makes me think of lymphatic. Uh, and then the skin immune defense barrier makes me think of actually circulation. The reason why is because the skin is the best way to tell how your circulation is doing. The health of the skin look-wise is the best way, right? So how you heal is circulation. 
right? That's why diabetic I, wounds take so much longer to heal is because there's actually lack of circulation happening to that area. And again, the breast area is also major circulation and lymphatic. Your breast tissue is just lymphatic tissue. So then again, we go down. Um, okay, we have circulation. Then we have lungs again, right? We had we saw them two other times up in the pillars, and then now again we see it attached to a system. circulation. Yeah. And the other great thing about this is, if you're on your report electronically, you can click on this resource, and it gives you something specific to do, right? So it grabs it from this huge list of resources. So if you don't want to like figure out, oh man, what, what, what should I look at? And what should I, you know, watch? If you don't want to have to think about that, then this is a great way to engage with all those resources. This will give you the exact resource we recommend based off of what's showing up here on the report for the immune system. The same thing goes with the circulate, uh, circulatory system. And then we list the most impactful factor because just like focusing on the pillar is gonna make a huge impact in multiple areas, we also wanna know if there's a particular organ or part of the body that if we just supported that area more, it would have a positive influence on many systems at once. So whichever one would make the biggest impact is the one that comes up here. And in this instance, it's the mouth. Yeah, so let's just say um, you're not sure which resource, like we, we make all the different resources stand out uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I, I would say the best thing to start with is obviously the pillar resources. And then the, the next biggest thing would be here. Yeah. Be especially when you see multiple systems, right? So if you see three or more systems, I would definitely pay attention to this. And then this is just the other systems that we measure, the remaining eight. And this is just so that you have this information in case you want to put two reports side by side and see how your systems have shifted as you apply these recommendations. And it would be really interesting for this person because almost everything is below 50%. And as we said, anything below 50% is not doing good. Something to support. Something to support. And yeah. then... Just above 50% is just okay. You're not doing great, but you're doing okay. So here, as you can see, almost every one of them during this sick kind of state that this person's in, almost everything is below 50 yeah. until you get to the pH environment. And just so you know, this is the secondary priority, right? So this is going to be the, the thing that needs the most support on the secondary priority, which is the lymphatic system. And the one that needs the least help, obviously, is pH environment. And you can tell by the percentages, right? This is a higher percentage on both the physical and emotional compared to the lymphatic system, which is way below. So the last one is the one that's doing best right now. Yeah. And then the last page lists the individual organs and their percentage, whether they're acute or chronic, and if they have, if they're more on the physical side or the emotional side. And um, this is, again, to give you more specific details so that you can put it side by side and see how things shift. Or if you're really interested on understanding how one of your organs is doing, this is an easy place to look. Yeah, not only is this an easy place to look, but then um, you'll be able to find the recording of this. So if you do have, you know, uh, your lowest score, let's just say is diaphragm at some point, then this will be a great recording to go back to, to then check out what's going on with the diaphragm, right? So we're going in order from adrenals all the way down to uterus. Um, and so we'll have all these resources for you guys. Uh, and then in addition to that, we actually created a one-pager resource that uh, we've added. Uh, and again, like we said, we're always adding more stuff here, Easy Diaphragm Solutions. So you can click there and get a downloadable PDF of Easy one through, I think nine it is or something. Yeah. Um, I, things that you can try out and apply right away that could help your diaphragm. All right. And again, uh, you have this click here for full resources. The other things highlighted just real quick is the significance. So you might see that one of your organs are either emotional, physical, or both, or maybe one of them is significant. So that just means that if it's significant physical, this 27% is a culmination of both physical and emotional scores. 
So if it's significantly physical, that means... That means the lowest scores were much more physical than emotional. Which means that if the whole score is 27%, then the just the physical score, if you were to just take that alone, would probably be like 15%, right? So it's going to be like 10 points or 15 points lower than, uh, than that total score that it's showing, because these are all total health scores for that organ. And so that also indicates to you that a physical remedy for the lungs might be more effective than an emotional one. Correct. However, in this example on the large intestines where it's significant emotional, an emotional exercise may work better for the healing the large intestine rather than a physical one. So that's what we want you to get out of this is yeah. if you're going to tackle a remedy to start supporting something, you should look on this page to see, okay, what organ or part of or aspect of me, right, my knees or... Uh, sinuses or whatever, what aspect am I trying to support with the recommendations that were given? And then the way I can pick which recommendation I should do is, okay, is it on the physical side or the emotional side, or is it on both? Would both do just as well? Yeah. All right. And that concludes. And